Monday, May the 6th, 2013, and I'm out in Hertfordshire, just about anyway, on the borders of Essex. About to uh, undertake Free Walk 168, which is a decent length one, 15 miles. Looking forward to that. Uh, now the evenings are drawing out, albeit that we've only got six weeks to go until the longest day. Always uh, depresses me that. Anyway, this is a 15 miler uh, in predominantly wooded territory. So who knows, might even catch some bluebells today. Um, it's a cracking day, due to be in the 20s. Sunny all day, which is why I've waited until today. So um, yeah, it's got all the makings of a good walk this one. Broxbourne's a relatively new town, added on to Hoddesdon, hence the uh, station. Right, press on. It's about 10.30, starting early today because I've got a long distance to go, so let's crack on. Just passed through the metal kissing gate and we're straight into an information panel here about the new river path, which is what we're uh, about to follow. Then immediately we're next to this uh, man-made navigation channel passing the old pumping station referred to in the text apparently built in 1886 another piece of Victorian uh, mastery which is long since gone Continuing all along the New River Path. Interesting sign here on my right. Abandon the horses. Hmm, clearly they've been removed. I wonder if I might get to hear an elusive cuckoo today. I'm certainly going to be in the right terrain for that. Missed one last year, first year in my life I haven't heard a cuckoo. So fingers crossed. Some serious bank erosion going on over there. You wouldn't want to be living in that little bungalow, would you? Just get glimpses of the uh, lake, man made no doubt, on my right. And as you can hear, plenty of bird song, chiff chaff omnipresent, dominant sound thus far, along with a chaffinch. Young ducklings are out already. So the cycles continue. Time and tide wait for no man and all that. Here comes mum. Scenery opens up a bit now on the right. Flooded meadows now are a distant memory it would appear. And I've already heard about the uh, soil cracking in the fields. Incredible, as I said. Won't be long before they're issuing a drought warning up here in Hertfordshire one of the most populated counties in the country my home county originally there you get a better view back now gentle southwesterly breeze today around about seven knots even so I think I will put the uh, wind cancellor on because I'm detecting some interference already young foal down there I wonder if this is the uh, abandoned horses that have been shifted. They look well enough kept, but uh, you never know. Okay, I do believe this is the um, steel bridge referred to in the text that we now cross over the New River. Indeed so. 
the river to wood trail. This river to wood trail is very well signposted, so little chance of getting lost thus far. As we walk through uh, suburban Broxbourne. Okay, now entering Barclay Park and following something called the Spring Trail, which is very appropriate for this time of year. Information panel here about the restoration of Barclay Park. And it's ornamental lake. Interesting, I'm not sure why Thomas has sent us through that little diversion. He could have stayed on that path next to the uh, ornamental lake, just there, and avoided that little diversion, but there you go. Okay, now following the public footpath sign mentioned in the text, but uh, not mentioned in the text is this warning about cows with young calves. Always get belligerent this time of year. But these are jerseys, I think, and they're generally okay. So having negotiated cows and calves successfully, no issues. Now press on towards the busy A10. Yeah, unfortunately it's got a bit clouded than I anticipated today. I was hoping the sun would burn all this off. Certainly what the uh, weather forecast has said. Continuing on along this boardwalk, which I bet was very useful a few weeks ago. Still no cuckoo. This is ideal terrain. First sightings of wooden enemy today. I believe that's what it is. Not ransoms anyway. But I might get the two mixed up. So that bodes well for bluebells. Alongside lesser celandine. Yeah, there's definitely a problem with my camera on the uh, full focus. Lenses shifting a bit. I mean, I'll have to get that scene to at some point. Crossing over this woodland brook just prior to the A10 which is up on the embankment there. Okay, that bodes well. First sightings of bluebells today. And they're out, albeit not in full bloom, I would say. Now under the A10. No sign of any Hertfordshire Way sign post here. But uh, this is obviously our onward journey. Take that obvious path following the brook, but go up towards that pylon, apparently. Interesting, because uh, there is a Hertfordshire Way marker. Going back towards the A10. Approaching Hoddesdon Lodge with its uh, Carefully positioned UV panels there. Highly support that, as opposed to those uh, ice saws of wind towers. Hoddesdon Park Woods, having just left a couple of belligerent dogs behind me at Hoddesdon Lodge. Okay, entering. Uh, Woodland Trust Territory now by the Five Arm Footpath Post and the arrival time here is perfect 
because we're now going to be doing woodland walking in the heat of the day if you're doing this on a hot day like today well it's not too bad but it's just enough leaf cover lovely fresh green verdant to uh, keep the UVB away there's another worrying note from the Woodland Trust information about the decline of oak acute oak decline so it seems all of our uh, trees are getting attacked at the moment and it's all got to do in my opinion with globalization all these foreign things entering our country Japanese knotweed Japanese pondweed etc etc mink so it goes on so initially take this broad track which is still the river to wood trail K the text refers to a low yellow marker where you turn left along an indistinct trail that's going to be that trail over there I'm pretty certain but there's no yellow footpath marker so take care there I guesstimate this is about 30 meters in and uh, worryingly no footpath marker and this text wasn't written that long ago and now I'm on the right track because uh, here's the butterfly symbol referred to in the text collapsed unrailed footbridge referred to in the text some uh, wooden enemy over there but I don't know if this is going to be the right kind of soil for bluebells that would be annoying wouldn't it spend all day in a wood and no bluebells Well, if there's no bluebells, you've certainly got a carpet of wooden enemy. If I'm uh, identifying them correctly, and they're giving off a very pleasant aroma, or well, something is in here, and there's no other plants of uh, such abundance. What a delightful woodland this is! Reaching the T junction, turn left, as indicated by the butterfly symbol there. In one sense, this uh, is a little bit too manicured for my liking. Easy walking, so that attracts crowds, especially on a bank holiday Monday. And you know what I uh, feel about crowds. Earlier, it's absolutely amazing how the ground has dried out. And as you can see already, it's starting to crack. Rain is forecast for Wednesday, mind you, so that will soon change again. Just thanking my blessings today that the uh, heavens are not opening. By the same token, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing either, and that's uh, giving us some sunshine. In the boundary of the wood again, with Spittlebrook down below. And the omnipresent Chiff Chaff. information panel here about um, an ancient moated site that used to exist give you some idea of what it looked like there and uh, the remnants of this little stream creating its boundary It is amazing actually how little bird song there is in this wood. Aside from the chiff chaff and the usual regulars like great tit and robin. Not much uh, to excite me. Here's one of the muddier parts referred to in the text and even that's drying out. Bypass uh, around it anyway. 
a flower is out in abundance. Nay cast a clout till the May is out. It's interesting because uh, that's Blackthorn I believe, yet the Hawthorn seems to have been and gone. Usually the other way around isn't it, if my memory serves me well, which it doesn't these days. I've been at the Ford and Footbridges. Is by all accounts Ermine Street, the famous Roman road. Now entering Dane Mead Nature Reserve. And if we don't hear a cuckoo in here, guess I never will. Another information panel over there, I'll go and have a look at that. Information panel here about Dane Mead. Dane Mead Nature Reserve telling us that there are white admirals, lizards and broad-leaved haliburines. Interesting. Little brook seems a bit murky in places. Shouldn't imagine it supports much life. And I wonder if that'll be there come August. As I say we're at the tail end of a heavy and heavy uh, wet winter and not much of it left at the moment now there is a sound I don't recognise listen that one what the hell is that don't think I've ever heard that Incredible. Anyone know what that is? I can't see it. Incredible. Now following a more extensive section of boardwalk And the bird song's definitely picking up around this area. Now leaving Dane Mead Wood, which has uh, become coniferous at this point. Mixed woodland. Here's the decrepit wooden fence posts referred to in the text opposite an iron railing uh, uh, on the left and we follow this earthen path into the now predominantly coniferous woodland so definitely won't be any bluebells in there. Now walking through this uh, predominantly pine forest, some great mosses underfoot. Clearly the bird song isn't so great in these places. Now walking through a very pleasant section of Scots pine, having just passed a few cedar trees. Which are a lot darker behind me. Because of this um, moss underfoot, it's really good for the legs, this. Nice and spongy. Very easy walking. Still following the green butterfly symbol. Turn left here at this forest track. Pass more cedar. On through a kissing gate, which would have been a nightmare a few weeks ago. Not today though, thankfully. In over another stream and on into more mixed woodland. And now we can hear the jets coming out of Stansted. 
unfortunately. 45 metres on from Spittle Brook. Turn left here, on into the woodland. This is now Cowheath Wood. Look at that lovely verdant green on these birch trees. Another victim of disease recently. Okay, we're going to do a left here. This is um, 90 metres on from uh, walking through Cowheath Wood for 300 metres. Some kind of tits singing in the background there, I think. Emerging from Cowheath Wood and the sunshine seems to have disappeared. Not as the weathermen predicted. I'm just uh, stood by the solitary oak mentioned in the text, headed towards the house behind me. Now entering Broxbourne Wood. Very tranquil. God for these boardwalks. Stood next to a brackish looking pond there. Typical home of midges in season, which won't be far off. And right into a more coniferous section. X was written, as I say, only last year. Extensive coppicing going on here, or tree felling. Lots of Scots pines come down, just uh, crossing Spittle Brook here. With the uh, wire fence on the right referred to in the text, as we enter more mixed woodland again. Okay, looks like they've been clearing the uh, cedars up here. As we uh, veer left into Clay Pits Wood. Another bench over there on the left. Leave the road referred to in the text and take this bridle way through these trees. And the sun's back out, very pleasant now. Around one o'clock for the timekeepers amongst you. Walking alongside Brickenden Grange Golf Course. with a chaffinch singing in the background there. Very pleasant um, May afternoon it is. Following this footpath down to White Stubbs Lane, referred to in the text. Cross White Stubbs Lane, now entering more woodland. This time Wormley Wood. supported by the Countryside Commission, which I don't think exists any longer, does it? They keep changing these quangos. If I see any more of these benches en route through Wormley Wood, I may well grab one and have my lunch on it. I was going to divert to the picnic area marked on the uh, map on White Stubbs Lane, but um, if there are more of these benches, I won't need to. Brilliant. Great setting for your lunch, isn't it? In fact, I will take my lunch here. It's half past one, which is about the right time. And this bench has been dedicated by a former RAF, women's RAF. So um, it's good enough reason for me to sit here and uh, have some uh, repose. Okay, two o'clock, lunch has been had. 
What a delightful little stream this is. Love the way the moss is on the banks. Anyway, let's see if my decision to uh, rest at that particular bench is a wise one. I think it will be, just in case there aren't any more benches en route. Okay, bit of an incline here. Possibly the muddiest uh, section I've encountered today as well. No escaping this little bit. Trickle of a stream though, not much in there. And in fact I did pass one more bench about 100 yards on from where I was sat, but uh, ain't going to make a lot of difference. What a delightful canopy this is. Apart from the uh, Stansted jets. Yeah, there are a number of benches um, further in. If I'd have read the text, then I would have known that there were uh, benches further along. But there you go. These are, um, as I've noticed from the other ones, clearly benches where you can dedicate a part of the woodland in your will or to a loved one. Good idea this. It's a step away really from uh, having a green burial. Although for all I know the ashes could be scattered right around here. There's a thought. God rest her soul. At this uh, marker point, you have an option. You can continue left, take a shortcut, saving yourself a kilometre along that uh, direct track there. Yeah, that down there saves you a kilometre. But I'm uh, continuing straight on across the boggy ground and this uh, footbridge here. The uh, unrailed footbridge. You don't go straight on following the Broxbourne Woods symbol but turn left into Westfield Grove, which uh, looks like it might be more peaceful and quiet. A number of people around this afternoon in this woodland, albeit a bit uh, muddier underfoot. Yeah, this is certainly the muddiest section that I've encountered today, but very tame compared to what we've had over recent weeks. And it will have dried out very shortly anyway, I would imagine. Great to see this dead wood just lying around. Encourages uh, wildlife. Just seen a greater spotted woodpecker on one piece, but I couldn't get the camera out quick enough to film it. Lovely green, isn't it? So fresh. By all accounts, these ditches on my right and the remains of uh, possible Bronze Age field systems. Absolutely incredible really that I'm in all this woodland and it's the wrong kind of soil for bluebells. Maybe it's because the woodland's too new, seeing as it was meadow not so long ago. Apparently. The long and narrow pond on the right hand side referred to in the text. Once again very still. Not much in the way of uh, wildlife. Another possible <coughs> lunchtime resting place beside the pond for the picnickers amongst you. And I would suggest that this is a good walk for picnicking, seeing as it's nine miles into the lunchtime stop. So we're now back on the Broxbourne uh, Woods Nature Trail and the Hertfordshire Way 
and there's the um, circular metal bench over there referred to in the text another possible picnic stop look very carefully at the um, world here it's supposed to be a deer chasing its tail by all accounts can just about make that uh, figure out okay just passing the coal post first time I've seen one north of London um, plenty in the south and this one's lost its number unfortunately or it's been painted over slapdash laziness by uh, previous workers could have at least um, left that for historical purposes as they do in the south of London I do believe they can be seen in Epping Forest as well anyway shame it's lost its number because I'm sure that uh, would reveal a bit more about its history that's the streamlet referred to in the text and uh, a recent tree fall it's blocking the track, but clearly it's not that recent because people have been walking around the side of it. Okay, in the valley bottom here, you've got a number of wooden plank bridges. Uh, from what I can see, it's the one straight ahead there, that's 350 degrees, as mentioned in the text. Not that one over to the right, though I'm sure they'll all join up at the same place ultimately. Do actually take the um, bridge that I told you not to take, because it's uh, the, the route I've just taken brings you back out here anyway. At the junction where the shortcut directly ahead of me there joins the uh, extended version of the route back there. And just in front of this information panel about Broxbourne Woods. It says here one of the best places for wildlife in Britain. I disagree. The uh, floor of the wood is very sort of sterile, clinically clean, no stinging nettles, etc. So um, I haven't even seen a deer today. You can definitely tell this is uh, a man-made plantation. Apart from the birds singing, and they're fairly common species, apart from that one unusual one I heard earlier, not much going on. So yeah, I'm not too sure I agree with what's written on that panel. Five metres on from that information board, and uh, as asterisked, in the text. I'm not sure why the author does that because it confuses me. Makes me think that uh, I've missed something earlier on in the text where the asterisk refers to. But uh, hey ho. Uh, what you do get though, as referred to in the text, is one of those purple topped marker posts. So clearly the asterisk text refers to the ongoing journey. So we take a right here just as we approach the streamlet referred to in the text I'm not sure what these Wildway WW symbols are for clearly we're in the wrong part of the country for that but uh, there you go continuing ahead at this Bencroft wood marker the rare view today into open country on the right Some lovely tree colours over there. Can't remember what that is. Is that some kind of uh, poplar? Or is it that willow? There you are, the old camera's starting to wiggle again as I uh, hit maximum range. Such a shame. 
means my recordings at the moment are not perfect. Well, not that they are normally, but uh, that's not helping. Okay, about to enter Emmanuel Pollard's. Okay, uh, to my right we have a kissing gate. And that's the way on to the uh, recommended lunchtime stop. Now, although I'm not stopping there, I'm in two minds as to go and record it for you. Yeah, let's check the time. So, this is the view you get when you come out of the woods and on uh, the track down to the pub, which I have decided to film for you. 700 meters there and back, but uh, what's that, 20 minutes? Hopefully. So, this is the recommended lunchtime stop. Rather large um, car parking area. Imagine on a day like today, the uh, rather extensive gardens are very busy. It's the opening hours. No idea of the uh, costs here, but I wouldn't imagine it's cheap. And there's the phone number if you want to phone ahead and work out how much it does cost. Now bearing in mind it is quarter past three at the moment, uh, as mentioned earlier, I would suggest that this is probably a walk for a picnic because uh, this lunchtime pub is nine mile in. We've still got seven to do. As I say, I've got here about quarter past three. So uh, yeah, probably a picnic walk this one. The uh, text refers to continuing your direction north so uh, presumably we're, that means following this butterfly symbol um, that's the way I came from before going down to the woodman before reaching the road which is up there ahead of me do a left here by all accounts I lost Alsatian is at Wesley 011-01992-461-057 Shame they haven't dated that though. Looks recent. Been crossed uh, Stubbs Lane. Makes a change now to come out into open countryside for a little bit. What an amazing tree this uh, wreck is. Another oak been struck by or uprooted by the strong winds, not struck by lightning unusually. And that car park over there is uh, the car park to Paradise Wildlife Park, which is um, in the fields on my right. My onward journey is uh, past these donkeys towards that house over there. Not sure what that noise is on the left. Sounds like fireworks going off. A solitary Hertfordshire swallow. My lens is struggling with this. Could well be shacked up in that barn there. Funny enough, and without me knowing it, that was Elysium House where we filmed earlier this morning. We're now going to retrace our steps back into Cowheath Wood. So heading back into Cowheath Wood, some lovely greens there. Shame, uh, shame the sun isn't out now. It's quite balmy. So we was at this uh, marker post earlier today, having come from the right. Now we're going to take uh, the left 315 degrees up into the forest. So this will be fresh uh, scenery. Passing the memorial bench for Henry Barnes. 
who uh, clearly their evidence is that walking is good for your health. He lived to be 90. Sure there are uh, other genetic factors but walking certainly does you no harm unless you're on the uh, concrete footpaths all day. Okay, I've reached the half height wooden pole I believe. It's got a B on it and there's the wooden gate uh, with um, no horses written on it. Not that the text has that but um, just for your information. Got an electric fence to clamber over here as well. Thanks to our friends uh, in the East Hearts Ramblers, East Hearts Footpath Society. Bane to the left of this pond. Lovely May Blossom. No need to clamber over the stile because the gate is open. Quite interesting, there's a kind of Wilden feel to this part of Hertfordshire. Rolling hills, very uh, agricultural and rural. A pair of mallards over there making the most of uh, that puddle. What's left of a pond really. A bit like hippos in the um, African desert. Making the most of a bit of mud. Now, once again, I wonder if I'm going to have a problem finding the path because uh, there seems to have be some um, recent developments here that may mean that the footpath marker is not where it should be. Soon find out. This is for the main walk, not the alternative ending. Here it is, hidden behind this uh, container. Onward journeys across this field next to what appears to be some barns being turned into holiday accommodation I would imagine judging by the number of them okay down there you've got the headquarters to the Celtic Harmony Group which sounds like it's right up my street um, google it but basically they promote farming methods according to the old Celtic ways and uh, promote mainly to young children man's interdependence with nature which I think is an excellent idea and here it is on uh, our doorstep down in Hertfordshire well 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 Celtic Harmony Group one to Google Judging by the number of cars in this car park here, very popular organisation. They were left here over this uh, little footbridge, through the swing gate there, kissing gate rather. Okay, you ignore the uh, public footpath 12 Highfields Farm direction. Take public Brideway 14 Broxbourne Common, which is uh, down here. Now veering left through Brambles Wood, but which left I'm not 100%. That is some bit of kit here. What chance have the trees got against that? a mechanised uh, insect. Sounds like there's actual works going on as I speak. And these smell very freshly cut. The smell of freshly cut pine. Delightful. Don't like to see trees cut down but uh, I know they have to be thinned out. Although should they be doing it at this time of year when the birds are nesting? That is the question. Okay, ahead of me there you can see the main track 
swinging right and there's also a turning off to my right just here our onward journey is into Highfield Wood on the left and looking back from whence I've just come it's quite a good shot it's like a tunnel leading into nowhere fantastic could be heaven up there could be hell down below depends which way you view it so we've now reached the uh, Spittle Brook and the boardwalk where I was earlier this morning not often a walk doubles back on itself but this one does in a couple of places okay, having crossed the uh, Ermine Street again we don't uh, follow the direction we followed this morning but turn left uphill here 40 degrees initially so you pass another bench on the right and uh, one of those purple topped footpath markers again and as mentioned in the text the metal field gate to the left onward journey straight on it's a lot quieter this afternoon both in terms of bird song and people about which is good not the bird song but the people about at this point, ignore the track ahead there, turn right 60 degrees downhill. So having been guided left by the uh, yellow footpath marker, which is now white by the way, I do believe this is the um, turning right, which is supposed to be due north, that isn't quite, not by my compass anyway. And you certainly do need a compass on this walk. Okay, so that turning I took right just prior to the bench was the wrong one because here I am opposite the uh, house and the swing gate. Though the path we're about to take on the right inside the wood is the one I just met a minute ago, I do believe, when I inadvertently turned right. So, uh, swings and roundabouts, I guess. That's where you come out right prior to turning right at the bench. So, as I say, swings and roundabouts. Lots of these memorials around. Clearly, as it's National, uh, sorry, Woodland Trust territory. Well, I bet they were a couple of interesting characters Xerxes and Julu. My goodness, the happy wanderers indeed. Here we are, back where we uh, entered the woodland this morning, and now, unfortunately, about to leave it several hours later. Through this wooden kissing gate, back down past the uh, boisterous dogs at that lodge. I didn't notice that earlier this morning. A bit of rhododendron. Parasite that it is. Always is nice in flower though. And that robin seems to agree. Rather pleasant view back, despite the pile on there, as we uh, come into uh, noise distance of the A10 juncture we're not going through the underpass but we're going to continue right up by the uh, A10 embankment there following the Hertfordshire way this time which is good variation looking along this section of the Hertfordshire way next to the A10 we've even got some gorse great so something about the soil type down this way and the uh, non-existence of bluebells and said that blow me a little cluster of them here 
isn't that amazing? None in the forest, and a few by the A10. Crossing the A10, and yes, you can just make out Canary Wharf in the distance. Albeit a bit of a hazy day today. Entering Lucy, Lucy Warren open space. Magnificent evening now. Shame it hasn't been like this all day, as was forecast. There's one of the ventilation ducts. Evidence of this being a former landfill site. Just uh, 20 metres on from the uh, gap over there, next to this gorse bush. Go through these bushes down this unsigned footpath. Amazing. Bluebells everywhere now. And I haven't seen one all day prior to today, really. Well, two little bunches. That's the kissing gate there referred to in the text. There are a number of options around here. We follow the Hertfordshire Way past this metal barrier between these tall fences down this shady footpath. I haven't seen those for years. Can't remember what they're called, but they're like artificial stinging nettles with that sweet nectar on them that bees love. Can't remember what that plant's called either, but uh, we just used to call it an artificial nettle. As I say, the bees love that. What's left of them. Just passing the bull, the first of uh, a possible tea time stop for those that are interested. It's next to a busy main road, but uh, might be some peace around the back. Also got the white bear on the opposite side of the road. My onward journey though is over the road into Richmond Port. Okay, coming out into Broxbourne Recreation Ground. This nice uh, avenue of, I think, these are lime trees. World War One Memorial. St Augustine's Broxbourne. Pretty much bang on time. I expect it to be done by six. Crossing over the New River again, which is neither a new nor a river, but a man-made navigation channel to feed London apparently. Another shot of the New River and the church from another angle. So here we are, approximately six o'clock, back at Broxbourne Station, after what was a very uh, pleasant 15 miles. The text refers to that as being a strenuous walk, but uh, I disagree. I don't feel um, as I've done any more than 10, to be honest. Such was the um, rejuvenating effect of it. Lovely walk, lots of variety, but I do like forests, plenty of that. Canal side uh, start was good. The only one comment I would have uh, is that the author continues to write in great big chunks of text, which it makes the walk difficult to follow. You've got to keep your eye on it all the time. No. Uh, chance of making any errors. You do need a compass as well. So, free walk 168 on this very pleasant day completed. It wasn't quite as sunny as I was anticipating but uh, there you go. Incidentally this station was relocated in 1959 I've just read. So there is an element of new town about Broxbourne. Anyway, I waffle on. So, another delightful walk completed. I must do a bluebell one next week before they pass and die. <laughs>